When you have many species living together, they all have an effect on each other. And any time you lose one species, whether it be anything from insect up to elephants, you've affected everybody else in that system. Today we're going to learn about an organization that works with endangered and vulnerable wildlife species. Its goal is to breed sustainable populations of animals with genetic diversity that may eventually be re-entered into their native habitats. Join us as we talk with Karen and Dave Holm of the Wildlife Conservation Center. Come on. Our facility is raising endangered African hoof stock, and primarily our species of animals here, they're just about erased in the wild, very, very few in the wild. In fact, our scimitar horned oryx are extinct in the wild. Uh, bongo behind us right now, there's only about 80 in the wild. Primarily, our mission is to have a facility where we can raise endangered species, a, a place where they can be raised as naturally as possible, come up with a population that's sustainable and healthy, and eventually, hopefully, repopulate the wild with these animals. And so why you all? Why did you decide to open the center? Well, Dave is from Virginia, a rural Shenandoah Valley, so we were attracted to this area anyway. And we had an opportunity to um, take over a, a small animal veterinary practice in, in Lovingston. And um, we had a contract for about five years and, and we did that. And as a veterinarian, you know, I've, I've taken care of animals and other people's animals for, for over 15 years. and. Now it's it's time to to give back and and it sort of found us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to yeah. Be honest. Yeah. So let's let's talk about the the three that you have here today and sort of why you chose that particular species to work with here. Well, as Dave said, you know, the, think a lot of the the elephants, the rhinos, the pandas, all of those get so much publicity, so much effort, so much um, uh, resources that a lot of these African antelope sort of get forgotten, and we we want to contribute to that and and not forget them. The scimitar are extinct in the wild. The addicts and the bonga are both close less than a hundred, yeah. close to. And why? Why? What's what's threatening them? Why, why is it? It's a conglomeration of issues as why they've become so endangered. Basically, the natives have one word for, for most all animals in Africa, and that, that word translates to meat. It's just like uh, if you ask a New Yorker about different species of cows, they're, to them it's all cow. And, and for, for native Africans, it's a food source. Right, And right. that coupled with losing their lands that they're living on, you know, as, as, we, as a population grows, you're going to lose land, and when you lose land, the species have to suffer, unfortunately. Habitat loss, you know, fragmentation of populations, you start losing the genetic diversity. And well, and let's talk about that, because you've done a lot of work in ge genomics. Yes. Genomics. Um, <laughs> and talk about the importance, that important role that it plays in the work that you're doing here, how that has completely flipped how we look at different things and what, and what you're capable of finding out and dealing with. So, you know, the, the field of genomics is, is fairly new in the last couple of years, and rather than genetics, we're looking at, the genetics looking at just genes, genomics is looking at the whole genome and all of the genes. So we can see relatedness, genetic diversity, how many we need to put back, what we need to put back, what we need to breed, and we can develop breeding plans and, and management plans according to the, to the genomic studies that we're doing. And talk about how that relates, say, for example, to, to the bongos here. Like, what is, what's the plan for this particular species here? There's, like we said, less than 100 in the wild. There are way more in captivity than there are in the wild. In the AZA SSP programs, And tell us what that is. So the AZA is the um, Association of Zoos and Aquariums um, it, within the U.S., and the SSP is a species survival plan under the AZA, and so they create uh, breeding plans for each species. Not every species is in it, but there's there's multiple plans. Um, Bongo is one that started, I think, in the late 90s, and there's about 130 animals in the SSP right now among like 13 institutions within the U.S. So we'll be comparing and looking through the genetic diversity. And so, how many how many do you have here now, and what is your goal? Well, here at our facility, we now have 10. Uh, our ultimate goal is to have between 20 and 30 breeding females. It'll take several generations before we'll actually have some that are, are suitable to go back in the wild. It's quite a process to, to acclimate and get them ready to go back in the wild. 
But the main purpose of, of like all the guys that we have here now, they'll stay here all their lives and, and their purpose is, is to breed. Karen's purpose as a scientist and working with other facilities is to genetically make sure that they're as sound as possible. And, and a good example of why genomics has become so important is back in 2004, a group of them were reintroduced back into Kenya. But unfortunately, they ended up losing over half of them because of, of a disease susceptibility that, that they knew nothing about at that time because oh, genomics right. was not as, as, as developed, developed as it is today. <laughs> right. And now with the tools that, that folks and, and scientists like Karen have, they can better prepare for all these issues and, and have animals that are, are way better prepared to go back into the wild instead of sort of hit and miss like it was years ago. And you all actually met working with animals many years ago, <laughs> Many years right? ago, we did, yeah. So. yeah. A little different program, that, that was, uh, at that point we were training animals. Uh, we had a lot of animal ambassadors and, and we did a lot of uh, educational programs and we even did some movie and television work. But uh, yeah, it was a different program back then. It was basically learning about animals and, and endangered species and, and now it's kind of come full swing back around to, to breeding and, and propagating. Like I said yeah. earlier, giving back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you've you've traveled all over the world, volunteering and learning, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I spent um, a couple of weeks in India and then a couple of weeks in Namibia for one of my master's courses in India, uh, the Sariska Tiger Reserve. We um, we were able to track some tigers, and that was pretty cool. Wow. Nothing like tigers in the wild. <laughs> wow. Well, so this you spent a lot of time with uh, the rhino in, in South Africa. Yeah, also. we um, we did some um, anti poaching efforts with some white rhino in. South Africa, so that was near and dear to my heart. And you have, all right, talk about the other animals that are here. You have another species of antelope. The scimitar horned oryx, like we had mentioned earlier, um, again, they were extinct in the wild. They have um, a, a really large reintroduction program right now um, that many facilities are, are working with, um, and they reintroduced um, 25 to start with back in uh, 2016 and have done really well. Their baby's being born. In fact, there's a group out there now that are help preparing the next round. So it's, it's so far yeah, we'll call it successful, but a we'll see how things is, go. A is a long process. They take them back to Chad, to their, their homeland, and they, they put them in what we call a, an enclosure. Over there it's about 10,000 acres, but it is enclosed, and that's sort of a soft release and they monitor them and, and see if they're going to be able to breed and sustain and, and now they've gone through about a year of that process. In fact, just recently, as last week, they've la let out the first group of 25 into the actual wild. Scimitar for 15 years were extinct completely in the wild, gone. So that officially right now, we now have some scimitar that are not extinct. Wow. And, and that's, a, that's a milestone that's and genomics, genomics has played a very big part in, yeah. in making this possible. And then you have, is it the, the addicts? Mm -hmm. Okay, the so addicts. what are the plans for this species? What? Very similar to both the bongo and the scimitar. There's less than, than 100 of those in the wild as well. They're from North Africa in the desert, just like the scimitar are. And they uh, going through the same, same genomics, same um, or similar anyway, uh, management plans, breeding plans. So the animals are from Central and North Africa. How are they adapting to Virginia here, here in Arrington, Virginia? Well, that's actually one of the reasons we pick these species. The bongo come from Central Africa and Kenya, but they actually live at about seven to 8,000 feet in the mountain areas. So unlike uh, Kenya, we're a little more humid, but very similar. Uh, Temperature-wise, we're very similar. We're a little bit colder in the winters, but then they have a heated barn to go into. These guys over here, now they're all from Chad and, and the desert area. So they, they, they experience a wide range of temperature differences and, and uh, the heat doesn't bother them a bit. And if they do get cold in the winter, again, they have a, a heated barn they can go into. So talk about the different conservation centers around the country and the, the organization C2S2. You're a member of that now, right? We are. So C2S2 is Conservation Centers for Species Survival. It is a, a, a global effort, actually, that was started in the U.S. by several of the um, larger facilities. And their mission is, is the same as ours, basically, to propagate these animals with, with genetic diversity in mind and, and health, of course for eventual re reintroduction. We actually became um, a part of the SPA, which is under C2S2, um, Source Population Alliance with, with the three species of antelope. And Source Population Alliance is just antelope species. Yeah. And they have, they have 10 species now. 
Yeah, it's really and it's exciting. so great to be able to work with these other organizations Absolutely. and these other centers, learn from one another, yep. and you you talk about your animals. You, you well, we, find, you, we pool our resources. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know, uh, you know, we we're looking for a group of, of a thousand bongo to, to have good genetic diversity. It may be 20 here, it may be 50 in another facility, but right. it's because of all the different facilities doing the same thing. Right. And with these different locations, it allows them to watch genetics a little bit differently instead of having to pull everybody in one one spot. It gives them a chance to, to look at different factors of the genomics and, and uh, get a stronger species out of it. Yeah. Now, are there other animals down the road that you'd like? To, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, she likes the white rhino, yes, right? I do. You, yeah. But well, part of our five-year plan is uh, we have a lot more property here to develop. This is our second year. We're just just now reached our second year, and and there's a lot of building. We have, of course, barns we have to build, and a lot more fencing that we have to put in. But uh, our future species in the next five years will include grevy zebra, reticulated giraffe. And maybe, maybe somewhere down the road, it, it, there might be a space for some white rhino. <laughs> it, it's a very expensive and it a very is, extensive uh, operation to have you oh, know, the I proper bet. facility for them. Mm, not but, to uh, mention their hopefully we'll Yeah, they're big they're ones. A big, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're a little big and they eat a lot. They, they need some really good barns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but uh, being in part of the, the SPA and, and we all kind of work together and, and public support is the big thing. Yeah. I mean, we are completely nonprofit. We, we get no government money. Everything that we do is publicly supported. And for folks who are very interested in, in conservation, you know, we, we love to talk with them and then we want them to be a part of us. And we, we always have openings for volunteers and, and, and just learn who we are and what's going on. And education in the long run is, is, is important to you all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, it, it, in, in different facets. I mean, we're, we will have areas here where uh, researchers, such as uh, behavioral study students and things like that can actually come and and, and work on research projects for, for these animals. As well as in the future, we do plan on having students be able to come in, in groups who really want to truly learn about conservation to come and, and you know, work, work with us one-on-one -on -one and, and learn about what's going on. Yeah, well, this is great work. Thank you all so much for spending time with us today. Thank you very much. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you for coming.